hair transplant in May 2001 and we met in about the November. Yeah. In November of 2001, yeah. So I was not long out of hospital when I met Chris. I was in my second year at Edinburgh University and I had um, I started to get a little bit breathless and I thought I was just, I was living the student lifestyle, I was drinking a lot, I was smoking a lot and so I started exercising more which was about the worst thing I could do because it turned out I had a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy which is a um, thickening of the heart muscle and it was probably caused by a flu virus I'd had a couple of months earlier and it was an autoimmune response that attacked the muscles in my heart. But um, I was diagnosed in the January of 2001 and then I went on the active waiting list in May 2001 and I only had to wait eight days for a transplant so I was very lucky. It, was, uh, it took them about two weeks to diagnose what was wrong with me and um, when they told me I needed a transplant I couldn't quite believe it because just about three weeks earlier I'd been out partying for New Year's Eve and doing all the normal things so it really didn't sink in and I think deep down I really didn't expect that it would come to a transplant. I really thought that was just something that would happen to someone else. I was only 19. really didn't seem a viable option for me. I'd known that my friend had a had a sister who'd, who'd been ill, um, but I think uh, you don't really understand the gravity of, of, of that illness or, or anything, I think, as anybody does until you get to know the person and what they've actually been through. So although, although I knew Kate had had a heart transplant, it just seemed like as Kate said, like some something that happens to somebody else, you know, and um, it was only when we started dating and, and, and obviously now we're married that uh, you actually really start to understand what that what that means, what that is. So kind of new, but it didn't didn't really sink in. At the time of my transplant, me and my brother had been living two streets apart in Edinburgh and saw each other at Christmas, <laughs> and then once I got ill, he pretty much he was at the hospital every day. And it definitely brought our family a lot closer together. Um, absolutely. We got married uh, just over a year ago, and it just so happened that during our honeymoon um, in in Bali, um, it was also Kate's tenth anniversary for a transplant. Um, so we uh, we got up at sunrise and climbed a, a volcano, and I think that was pretty uh, that, was, that was pretty emotional, I suppose, because yeah, we're on our honeymoon. We just got married, and and you just climbed the mountain. Which yeah, was cool. there's nothing my transplant stops me doing at all. I can, you know, I work full time and travel and do sport, and there's nothing that I can't do. And I think it's it was good as well because I think people were quite surprised that someone who'd had a heart transplant could do that level of exercise and do a four-hour hike up the side of a volcano. So it was good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I didn't I didn't know Kate when she gone through the um, the operation but the stories we talked a bit on the day the stories about how obviously you had to you know come back from, from scratch in a way yeah and then um because i'd only known her as a relatively able person you know um and every time she meets one of my friends or or or, or anybody it's always a surprise kate's had a heart transplant you know and that was like when we climbed the volcano it was it was just a very normal thing to do, and it was just a great, great landmark occasion, I think. In a way, when you first transplanted, it's such a, a it's, it's kind, kind of everything you think about, about. and in, in a way, way it's kind of nice that real life takes over, over. and I, I think, think about, about it all, I think about it all the time, and I'm conscious of it, it. it's just, it's part of me now, and I don't feel the need to always to mark it in any way, because, you know, I think about the person who donated it, but I don't, I don't feel the need to, you know, throw a bar here and anything, it's just, it's usually quite quiet day. The very fact that someone was so generous and someone, uh, someone, someone did that and joined the, uh, the register gave me a really wonderful wife, so my life would also be very, very different and I've, I've just got a fantastic um, wife and Kate's an incredible woman and, um, you know, as Kate said earlier, we kind of moved on and deal with it in, in very different ways because it's very much part of day-to-day -day life and we very rarely talk about it and we don't really think about trying not to think about the bad stuff um, but yeah we just have a very very happy life and that's all due to the fact someone someone was so generous um, and I think everyone everyone should be if they, if they knew that that if they joined the, the, uh, the register that that could actually give somebody else an opportunity to 
to go and live the life like, like Kate has and for, for a couple to stay together or to meet in the future or to, you know, to go on and, and keep families together. So, um, yeah, just very, very grateful. Very grateful. So. Um, I guess it's the same for me. It's, it's a gratitude because, you know, when I had my transplant, I was 19 and it seemed like everything was everything was being taken away from me. I, I didn't know if I was going to get my transplant and if I hadn't then, you know, I'd never have the opportunity to go on and meet someone and get married and just do all the things that growing up are a given, they're expected. You don't you don't question that's what's going to happen. So for me it's just yeah, just a deep sense of gratitude mm. and happiness that someone someone's willing to do that for an, a total stranger. It's pretty amazing because you would never, you would just never know the impact of what you're doing because obviously the person that, that joins the organisation, if, if it ever comes to that, they never know what's going to happen with, um, or, or the impact that their their decision has. But it, and we live a very normal, very very happy life, and it's um, everyone should have that opportunity. I, I think really, especially when it comes down to the, something so easy, you know, it's, it's joining the register, and, and obviously Kate went through that before we met. And we wouldn't be here. Right? Say, yeah, we wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as corny as that sounds, <laughs> we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the fantastic life that we have, <laughs> which we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to someone who is thinking about signing the register, I would say find out a bit more about it. Go on the Live Life Then Give Life website. All the information you need is there. Um, and then talk to your family about your wishes because it would be awful if they didn't know that's what you wanted. If something happens to you, that's terrible but for your family, but if they know that you wanted to be an organ donor, then at least that pressure is taken off them. And in a very horrible time, that's one more decision they don't have to make. They know your wishes and you'll make a real difference to very many people's lives.